Hey guys, how you doing? Um, my name is Donovan Turley, and uh, this is the video portion for the Music 060 uh, final performance at Glenview College, <coughs> California. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what this is. Uh, my piece is a clarinet piece. Uh, I'm a, been in, I've been in music for about you know, give or take 12 years, uh, if not going back more, but like really on to it. Um, uh, mainly my, my main instrument is a clarinet. I've been playing that for about 10, 12, 10 to 12 years now uh, and some stuff. So the piece that I picked out for you guys today is Camille Saint-Saëns Clarinet Sonata, uh, opus number 167 in B flat. <clears throat> it's a four part movement. However, I'll only be playing the first movement today due to time constraints and other variabling factors I was unable to master and perform and record the other three movements of this section so you're just gonna get the first one today um, it's gonna last about four and a half minutes give or take uh, and the rest of the piece but it's a fantastic piece it's very beautiful uh, it differs in a whole bunch of different factors um, and we're gonna get into that but first one we'll talk about Camille Saint-Saëns give a brief quick history about him um, Saint-Saëns, he's a French composer, organist, pianist, and uh, conductor of the Romantic era, uh, era of music, which started um, uh, with Beethoven coming through and creating his his works of art. So what he, what Beethoven inscribed, uh, going away from the traditional classic modern or um, classic music and uh, of normal music ship and. Um, like the classical era of music, uh, which stand for Baroque and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go in that timeline, but the classical era of music was very um, strict and formed and flowed. So typically we deal a lot more with like, uh, with like Mozart and Haydn and Handel. They all dealt with classical eras types of music. Uh, obviously I'm broadening that. I'm <laughs> That's struck with a very broad brush. But um, yeah, so their forms of music were more... Um, Effortless and technique and precise and, and technical and precise is the correct ter is the correct terminology, but that's what they that's what they focused on. Beethoven came into the area and era and m grew up being uh, I forget if it was Haydn I'm pretty sure Haydn was a mentor if I get that if I remember that correctly. Uh, came in was taught by Haydn and taught by others and read a lot and read a lot of other people's works and created on his own expanded his own repertoire, but. He allowed his emotions to take hold and form to create his music and influence his music. Uh, and then you get in the form of Impressionism after that, you know, with like uh, Debussy and other things like that, which uh, had the same kind of idealistic capacity, but it was in a different aspect. So Camille Saint-Saëns being a um, Romantic era composer really had his um, his emotions kind of take in and plead into this case. Uh, he's he's pretty well, he, he's really well known. Everybody knows the piece Dance Macabre. You probably don't know it by that name, but I guarantee you you've heard it in some, you've heard it in some form or fashion. Uh, easily, right? Uh, growing up in like the old, in the order, older, uh, not, uh, late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s era, the, I'm pretty sure it was like a Disney form of animated uh, s uh, skit, had the dancing skeletons, they were dancing to Dance Macabre, that's what that, that's what that piece is, it's played uh, a lot of times during Christmas and Halloween, Christmas is very weird for a piece like this, but it sometimes can work, there's a Reese's commercial that has Dance Macabre playing in it, a lot of people know that piece. It's very well known. But he also wrote like the opera of Samson and Delilah, the uh, the first cello concerto, and the carnival, the animals. Those are just some pieces in the few that are like very well known. So the the piece, the the sonata piece, uh, Opus 167, is a, a, as I stated before, a four part movement. The first movement is quite lyrical it's uh, pretty simple and finite but it is it is pretty lyrical and you get this the capacity between uh, the piano accompaniment and the clarinet really bond together to form 
<clears throat> a different style or a not different style really convey like a, a like a budding ro budding romantic relationship is is what I is what I feel when I listen and play and perform this piece um, and beforehand so like it starts off with a very simple melodic gesture of, of four notes very lyrical very passionate symbolize uh, symbolizing like a uh, a, very, a budding relationship like it's coming through perhaps they were already married between two people or uh, had established a, a outstanding relationship beforehand etc etc and it it, it it speaks to it speaks into a way of like it, everything is glorious it's getting up there it's pretty and yada 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 and you're hearing the the main phrase which is capitulated on and, and uh, devised upon and built upon and the main phrase just being right that that lyrical phrase <clears throat> being expanded upon so we have that in the introduction and then we go down towards like the development section of the sonata and this the development section is very austere and moves away from the the introduction <clears throat> which is where you establish the main form of melody the main theme of, that's going to be progressing through this piece so with with the development you, you you'll definitely hear it it gets a lot more technical there's a lot more dissonance between the piano accompaniment and the clarinets there's a lot more moving parts there's a lot more runs there's no longer these beautiful long stretch arpeggios that come through very technical very very high speed and stuff like that that's what that's going in there's a different time signature change and there all this other stuff and then it gets towards the recapitulation towards the end which is like the third section of this piece and <coughs> excuse me and the recapitulation expands upon but also slightly tweaks the main melody and you'll hear it again but it's got a slightly different tone and the what I what I imagine Camille Saint Saëns was trying to bring about to this piece with the um, <clears throat> the deviation and the recapitulation is the fact that maybe there's turmoil in the relationship or in the romantic budding. There's like some form of stress that's causing this music to form this idea and this bridge in your mind that kind of brings out this this scenario to be played. So like it may it's. It's a very budding relationship in the beginning. It's very bright, very beautiful, nice and smooth. It gets more dissonance. There's obviously a lot of turmoil. There's like a, a potentially, like, I don't know, like a fight maybe between the relationship or something. Who knows? Uh, it gets into something like that, and then it breaks off, and it continues, and then there's still a slightly a little bit more turmoil because the piece starts to kind of change with the main melody. It's, it's articulating upon it, and it's expanding upon it. And then it finally resolves in the resolution towards the end, um, back to the original melody, back to the the thing, and then it slowly comes to an end on a very bright uh, and flattering set of chords with a nice little run. So that's the piece uh, in its entirety. That's a little brief history of Camille Saint Saëns. That's a that's my. Um, philosophical adventures or ventures uh, as you will into the uh, into the piece and so now without further ado let's go ahead and begin performing this piece this is my rendition of Camille, uh, Camille Saint-Saëns um, clarinet sonata in B flat opus 167 <coughs>
that was my rendition of uh, Camille Saint Saëns clarinet opus or clarinet sonata in B flat uh, opus number one sixty seven. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I do apologize for not being able to complete and uh, record the other three uh, movements to this piece, but hopefully we can expand on that in the future. So thanks. Have a good one.